Before we can uh, begin this redesign process, uh, I really think a tough question needs to be asked um, that's going to affect uh, the whole design completely, especially the size, the weight, the interface versatility, and the uh, fabrication cost and simplicity. Um, and that is the question of do we really need this auxiliary support system in any of the applications. Um, I think what happened was originally on the life track drive wheels uh, this motor was used here uh, which is a Charlin 2000 series motor um, it's a uh, 30 about 32 cubic inch motor here and uh, this motor uh, let's start over here on the hydraulic motor page um, down here this is a uh, actual diagram of uh, what I believe is the Rex Roth type uh, a lot of manufacturers make them hydraulic pump that's currently being used on the power cube in theory a pump and a motor are the same thing uh, one is just being turned by an engine a, a pump is just being turned by an engine and, and pushing fluid out um, a motor is just having fluid pushed in it and resulting in the shaft turning. That, however, uh, only works in theory in a, a, a majority of the designs uh, for different reasons depending on the, the different design, uh, a vane or a gear or uh, internal valving, all kinds of issues. As an industry standard, um, pumps and motors are very rarely interchangeable. Um, on, on the pump, um, you'll usually see these bushings instead of bearings. It's cheaper. Uh, there's not a lot of crazy forces uh, because it's just a constant uh, turning of the shaft from the engine. And this is also the case on a lot of basic hydraulic motors like was originally used. Uh, this um, probably in this Charlin 2000 series motor, it has bushings or maybe it has some lightweight bearings. With the recent, uh, the last rendition of the quick wheel connect, um, in that process an upgrade was made to the 15,000 inch pound motors to get more power out of it. And subsequently um, I believe that that, actually, that upgrade actually could have done away with this whole design, uh, this whole uh, bearing assembly design because this is designed to be a wheel motor. Uh, these 15,000 inch pound motors um, have much bigger bearings inside of them and uh, that um, could negate the need uh, for extra um, extra support assembly to support the radial and axial forces from pushing down on the auger or carrying a heavy load on the life track. Uh, we can read here that uh, the motor is a white hydraulic DT series uh, 45.6 cubic inch. Here is the model code. Um, and we can uh, go to Google, find uh, DT, uh, white drive products DT series. Um, from that we can uh, go down here and get the catalog information, a PDF. And that pulls up this page. Uh, here we can see this is very common. Most manufacturers, or a lot of manufacturers, uh, will make one set of motors in several different configurations. So this chart down here, uh, we can see the 45.6 inch cubic displacement motor that you guys have uh, is right here and. Uh, here's the other displacements for uh, various RPM and power generation and they actually make all of these in these three different configurations. Uh, here's their 700 series which is a standard hydraulic motor the seven, uh, and which would mount on this face here. The 710 uh, hydraulic motor has an integral brake and a different set of bearings and it mounts a little further back uh, here. The 740 um, is a hydraulic motor with a wheel hub and this is actually the Primo design 
to use if you're not going to have um, extra uh, bearing support assembly, um, spindle, jack shaft type thing. Uh, because you can see uh, here's a double um, tapered roller bearings to support a heavier load. Uh, on these other two, uh, they have smaller bearings hiding in here somewhere. Um, and here's on the 710 series, which I'm sure is close to the 712. Um, this is what you guys have. So the question is, uh, is this strong enough what you guys have to hold up the life track and uh, perform all the other uh, applications without the use of a uh, auxiliary bearing support system? Uh, we'll scroll down here and we will find uh, the bearing load curves. Here's the 700 series. Uh, here's the 740 series. We'll come back to that in a minute. And here's the 710 series, which is what you guys have. Uh, we'll zoom in here. And uh, here's the load curve graph. And it's, it's plotted um, on the silhouette of the motor, uh, imposed on it because uh, wherever your load falls on this curve, um, it, that is how much weight it can hold up radially. So how much uh, load you could haul on the life track without damaging the motor or uh, wearing out the bearings faster. This is uh, on the left side here um, in pounds and uh, this is millimeters um, on this curve. So this tells us that those uh, the, the bearings are probably uh, right here, one here and here, and this peaks right here at about uh, 11,000. Um, that would mean if you were mounting the wheel directly to this and you had it centered perfectly where it's optimal, it's rated for um, 11,000 pounds. This broken line over here uh, usually represents uh, the uh, max load you would want to put on it stationary if you weren't you know to use it say you just wanted to pick up something to set it in the back of a truck or something then you could pick up that much weight sometimes I've seen this actually represents the weight limit at which the shaft risks breaking and I don't see where it specifies um, on this manual. So it's one or the other, it's pretty low, so I would probably guess that's the stationary limit, uh, but we need to check into that if we're thinking of exceeding it. Um, so we just drop down here for general purposes and say five or six thousand pounds um, would allow us a, a wider range of uh, offset rims to use um, and still be safe. So that's 6,000 pounds per motor um, that this is rated at to, to run at. Um, so you've got two motors so that's you know 12,000 pounds of weight. Um, you divide that by half because if you're picking up 6,000 pounds in the bucket you need 6,000 pounds um, behind you to counterweight it so you don't flip over. Um, so that far exceeds the requirements of the life track, and I really think the life track, using the wheel connects on the life track, are probably going to be the highest um, radial load demands, uh, unless we get into uh, using the universal rotor for a really heavy duty truck. The only other application I can really think of is if uh, we were doing some really heavy duty winching. Uh, winching up big logs or up a hill or, or something like that then your your forces get out here but in the winch assembly we would probably put another set of bearings uh, so that's not an issue uh, let's scroll up here this is the 710 which is what you guys have and see what this 740 series uh, which is really really designed to handle a high load you can actually see they have the hub built onto it so you just bolt the wheel straight to it and you can see this peaks at uh, 27,000 pounds. So uh, that means um, 
pretty much the same motor you guys uh, got from Surplus Center if you got the wheel hub version which I doubt they have uh, Surplus Center they might from time to time you know it would really do the job no problem it would hold far more weight uh, but even going back to the 710 series I don't think it's going to be a problem I really think we should ask ourselves why are we uh, messing around with this extra um, a ton of extra weight, a ton of extra length um, complexity you know we're still having problems with this thing uh, we've already talked about, you guys talked about um, trying to make it a whole lot shorter which I think certainly is possible if you decide to even keep it so considering that uh, a hydraulic motor building one from scratch is part of the GVCS50, it's one of the machines uh, and it stands to reason uh, we can build it to spec however needed and put whatever size bearings uh, is needed in it um, so let's just go over the advantages of both designs uh, if we mounted the uh, work tool or the tire straight to a hydraulic wheel motor with a sufficient bearing capacity um, the advantage is obviously uh, it's compact, it's lightweight, it's cheaper, it's very quick to build um, the bearings are sealed inside the motor housing um, so they're going to be lubricated it's, it's industry proven um, I'll show you lots of applications where this is already done so the less parts to, to wear out and break uh, there are some some advantages to uh, using this uh, bearing support assembly but I just really don't think they outweigh the, the disadvantages uh, the advantages would be that you can remove the motor um, while there's still a tool attached to the universal rotor uh, and that's that's kind of a given um, if the auger or the wheel is attached directly to the motor um, then you can't just pull off the motor and switch on a different one however uh, how often are you really going to be doing that so I don't think that's really a big issue um, you just gotta take the wheel off or the auger off and then take the motor off or take them off as one piece um, there's uh, more motor choices um, because you can get into like this Charlin 2000 series which doesn't have the bearing capacity to support it uh, however I think we can design it so that it's made to use with a wheel motor that has sufficient bearings um, but if you want to throw in another uh, a lighter weight motor you just um, put in a very compact bearing assembly on the motor first and that bolts uh, to the, the motor mount plate uh, the other thing to consider is with this jack shaft here you can uh, come off of it um, like you guys have already discussed with uh, a sprocket and chain this allows for gear reduction or uh, increasing the speed um, that's definitely not very easy to do if the work piece is mounted directly to the motor as far as gaining strength uh, I don't think that's uh, a, a big issue right now with the stronger motors that you guys have uh, you're, you don't have enough weight on the life track to take advantage of, of any more uh, torque in the wheels um, and since we will be designing a hydraulic motor from scratch uh, what we can actually do is make it so we can bolt uh, one hydraulic motor to the back of the other one it would just have a duplicate pad uh, this is very commonly done with hydraulic pumps not so much with motors um, but the principle is is the same you can't increase your speed that way um, like you could if you came off with a sprocket but you can get twice the power or three times the power however many motors you bolt on there uh, so basically you uh, the adding more power isn't an issue but you, the speed might be an issue um, however why don't you just switch out a higher speed motor 
Um, that's that's really it, and I can't think of any other big advantages that would uh, make it worthwhile to have all this extra weight and mass, um, size, complexity, and things that wear out and go wrong. Plus, uh, you know, I don't think we're even at the tip of the iceberg of really designing a good bearing shaft assembly. I know a lot of work's been put into it so far, but uh, you guys just broke one yesterday. You got the, the issues of the size, uh, which is going to severely limit it. This length is, you know, four or five times the, or three or four or five times the length of the hydraulic motor, which is going to limit it in a whole lot of applications. This type of design um, with extra bearings externally and a, a spindle um, is not used very common uh, commercially. Uh, I'd say most of the time, like on a skid steer, if it's used, it's because the machine is over engineered. Uh, because, as you guys know, that's something that happens very commonly in the industry. Um, the only other case I can think of is really big in big bulldozers. Um, you might have something similar. And uh, it just really kills the um, compact size advantage of a hydraulic motor. Uh, if we do decide to stick with something like this, uh, I think uh, anything over um, probably four or five inches is um, is too long. That would be the goal to get it under probably under four inches. Uh, what could be used is um, like a Kellerman uh, bearing hub assembly um, that's on the front of a truck or on the rear of a truck. The, the front ones um, are usually a little more compact. All I did here was type in uh, four wheel drive, four by four front hub. And this is off of, uh, for example, F-150. Um, and these are just basically replacement hubs for when your bearings wear out, you slap a new one of these on. Um, and it's basically a pair of tapered roller bearings here. It's got a, uh, a through point here where the shaft can the drive shaft can go through. That's why it's important to have use a four-wheel drive set because um, the front of a two-wheel drive isn't driven, so it doesn't have any uh, ability for the drive shaft to actually turn the wheel. This is just the wheel just spins freely on the bearings. Um, so I look at doing something like that, um, and, and these are common on on axles. Uh, up to 40,000 pound weight capacity. Uh, but going back to getting away, doing away with the whole extra bearing assembly, we'll look at some pictures here of some uh, augers that are have the auger bit mounted directly to the motor shaft. This is a uh, smaller motor from Surplus Center. Uh, the guy claims that he's got plenty of power. Um, with this smaller motor on his auger, 65 horsepower tractor. Um, and this uh, auger bit is, is directly bolted to um, this wheel hub that came with the motor, all attached in one. The only bearings supporting it are the bearings inside the motor. Here's another view of the same setup. There's the underside where you can see the uh, auger attachments bolted straight to the hub. Um, here's one that looks like it's attached uh, directly to the motor. And here's one that definitely is. Here's another one. This is off of a uh, power track. Uh, this might actually be a homemade attachment, though. Uh, but as I said earlier, uh, that's that's easy compared to supporting the weight of a tractor. 
So we'll look at a few more examples here of applications where you wouldn't want a bunch of overhang uh, with extra bearings and shafts. This is a crop sprayer where you drive in between the rows of crops. Um, they've actually got planetary gears, gear reduction. They've got a high speed motor coming in to planetary gear reduction which has its own bearings in it. Uh, here's one that uh, probably has planetary gears on the other side. Here's a pretty good example. This is a Poke Lane manufacturer of this hydraulic motor, and they actually make it with this steering knuckle, uh, so the motor turns. Um, so obviously, uh, the wheel is supported by the, the bearings, which I'm sure are tapered roller bearings inside. Um, and this particular one is actually used on uh, some smaller front end loaders that would be still larger than the live track. Um, I, the brand is Kramer and they're uh, smaller smaller wheel loaders that don't articulate um, all four wheels steer. Oh, uh, Here is actually one of those wheel loaders with a different style motor on it. Um, same design though. Here's the crop sprayer. Uh, as you can see, you need the ground clearance and having a long shaft assembly does not provide ground clearance. Crop sprayer. Uh, this is a uh, this is a hub motor specially made by uh, the company that makes these forestry trailers um, and it's obviously supporting all the weight of the wheel without extra external bearings the crop sprayer, uh, different view of that same, this is actually a hydraulic motor uh, made by Poclane, this is a smaller model I believe. Uh, here's a small picture of one of those loaders. Here's another uh, hub motor that's supporting the weight of a tractor. This tractor weighs 6,000 pounds um, and uh, has 2,400 pound lift capacity with a 4,000 pound breakout. Um, and this is a commercially made tractor here in the States. This might be uh, one of those forklifts that you see on the back of the 18 wheelers going down the highway. Again, hydraulic motor uh, is supporting the weight of the vehicle, no extra bearings. Here's some um, hydraulic motors. As you can see, they tuck nicely inside the rims. It's a huge advantage. Uh, here's a straight axle with hydraulic motors on the uh, ends of it. This would uh, obviously go under a pretty heavy vehicle. Um, here's another one. This is a conversion to turn a two-wheel drive semi truck into four-wheel drive. And um, it has hydraulic motors built in here. Another example. Uh, so the only other thing to do to, to really be sure, I guess we could survey all the, the motor manufacturers and make sure there is a good assortment of wheel motors available with higher capacity bearings in them. Um, but the ones that you guys got, the 15,000 inch pounds off surplus center, um, is uh, that's a regular stocked item, I believe, at surplus center. They had a lot in stock, so... Um, you saw the bearing curve for them from the manufacturer and I think that uh, my recommendation is that we should uh, really consider doing away with all this extra um, part count and weight that we've got going on here since we've upgraded to the uh, hydraulic wheel brake motors. Uh, once we make that decision to do away with the auxiliary bearing support um, and primarily design it to use a wheel motor with sufficient bearing capacity with the option of using a, a motor that doesn't have sufficient capacity but 
um, then it'd be the burden of the replicator or or whatever to install a um, sub-assembly with that motor uh, once we decide to do that or at least decide on what our target length is going to be to shrink this down then we can continue on designing the rest of the three interfaces because that's obviously going to change um, the overall size and a lot of other uh, factors here's a cutaway picture of a hub and you can see the opposing tapered roller bearings here um, that are very close to where the wheel would mount um, to uh, optimize to maximize the amount of weight it can carry uh, so generally speaking uh, the amount of weight it can carry depends on how close it is to where the load is being exerted and how large these bearings are so if this was the housing for a hydraulic pump uh, that we were a hydraulic motor that we were going to build uh, we would just spec the size of the bearings accordingly to the uh, amount of weight it needs to carry. Uh, and in the meantime, while we're still buying them, uh, then we'll just make sure that the manufacturer has spec the bearings uh, to carry enough weight.